Hello, my wonderful and lovely humans. So today we are working on the Designing Zoo Diets uh, booklet. Uh, so you guys should have a pink booklet. Uh, maybe it's white. I don't know. Depends on when I made those copies. But anyways, you guys should have a booklet version of this. Um, and I'm just going to use the full size version because I think it's easier for you guys to see on camera. Uh, but you have a couple of materials that should be available to you. Uh, first you have this color copy. Now, both the front and the back are going to be the exact same thing as the first two pages on, uh, your booklet. So they quite literally are exactly the same, almost exactly. Uh, this one doesn't have the words on top, but anyways, almost exactly the same. They're just reference pieces. Um, but I wanted to make sure you guys had all of the information that you needed, uh, wherever you were, whenever you were, okay? Uh, the other thing that you guys should have available to you is a whiteboard. Now, I prefer whiteboards, but if you guys need to use scratch paper, whatever, any kind of uh, blank paper would absolutely work. Um, I just like to use whiteboards and I think you'll see why here in a little bit. But anyways, let's get going. So let me flip my camera. There we go. Okay, so let me get rid of this really quick because the first thing we are supposed to be doing whenever we get a piece of paper is, I am guessing because you guys are so smart that you said the right thing, which was to put your name. So Ms. Reyes and your class period. And I don't know which class period you're in, so I'm gonna put all of the ones that I have, four and six, uh, but you guys pick whichever one that you're in, okay? All right, so let's get going. The second thing we're supposed to do whenever somebody gives us a piece of paper is to make sure that we're reading the instructions or the background or whatever it is that they give to us. So uh, let's go ahead. Different species can have very specific needs. When feeding animals, whether it is at the zoo or your own pet at home, it is vital for you to provide a diet that is biologically appropriate. So this is just kind of telling us exactly why we're doing what we're doing, okay? Now, if you guys look at the chart underneath, so like I said, it's basically the exact same thing as this, just less shiny, right? Um, if we look at this sheet underneath, what we basically have here is a shopping list, a grocery list for all of the items that are available to us to feed uh, to our animals at the zoo. So what we are gonna be doing is preparing three different diets. Oops. Uh, we need to prepare three different diets, one for a lion, one for a zebra, and one for a hedgehog, okay? All right, but let's continue reading the instructions because we just read the background, right? Okay, so I'll zoom in again so you guys can see my beauty. Actually, that's pretty good. Okay, uh, so using the data sheet from the zoo commissary, include appropriate dietary items in each table that meet or exceed each species minimum needs. Each species should be offered a minimum of three food items daily. Oh, so that sounds really important. Each species should be offered a minimum of three food items daily. So no matter which species, the lion, the zebra, or the hedgehog, we need to make sure that we're feeding them at least three items, okay? And the way I kind of described that in class was, uh, do you really like to eat steak by itself or would you like some mashed potatoes, maybe some corn, green beans, you know? Uh, that that made me think of the lady, potatoes, tomatoes, beans, beans. Okay, you guys know I'm weird, right? Okay, uh, but anyways. <laughs> uh, okay, the other thing that you guys are given here to get the mass of the total portion to be fed each day, Multiply the portion size by the percentage of each macromolecule category, protein, fat, and or carbohydrate, okay? Now, if you guys did the vocab as you were supposed to have prior to doing this, you would have written down that exact formula in formula version instead of words. So basically what, that, what those words said were mass of protein, uh, sorry, mass of whatever mo uh, macromolecule content is going to be the same as portion size times the percentage of that same macromolecule, okay? Um, the other thing you guys should have copied down was this conversion because what's gonna happen is, is maybe they're gonna sneak up and instead of putting kilogram the way that this paper wants us to, so you see how it says kilogram? 
they might try to sneak in a different sized item like this one right here. The rat is 100 grams. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well. Okay. All right. But anyways. Okay. Uh, so that is what that says right there in less wordy version. Okay. Uh, let's continue reading because we've got some information here about our African lion. And if we're creating a diet for him, maybe we should find out some specifics about what he's eating. So uh, African lions currently range in East, South, and Central Africa in grassy plains, savanna, open woodlands, and scrub country. Their historic range was much wider and still some persist in India. In the wild, lions will eat wildebeests, zebras, buffaloes, gazelles, warthogs, and other ungulates that may be in its area. If large game is scarce, they will eat small game and even rodents. At the zoo, the lions are fed a diet of fortified meats. So uh, I definitely heard that lions will eat wildebeest, zebras, buffaloes, gazelles, warthogs, and other ungulates. And again, if you guys did that vocab, you know that ungulate, ungu, ungulate, my bad, is the same thing as a hoofed mammal. Okay. Uh, the other thing that they'll eat, so this is only when it's necessary. So only if they are basically starving, they will eat small game and even rodents. So I'm thinking that these kinds of things are going to be our steak and these kinds of things are going to be like our sides basically. Okay. So, uh, now we'll come back to this in a second because it will be very important to us at the end, but not right now. So let's focus on what we need to. So the first thing we need to do is let's locate our steak. What are we going to feed our lion that is going to be basically the same thing as steak? And what we're going to do, where we're going to write that is on this page right here. So if we look at this, first of all, it's going to have us list our dietary items. And if you guys remember properly, hopefully you do, we need three items, at least three items from our shopping list to actually feed to our lion. Uh, so... The other thing that you guys are going to see is that this is divided into three parts, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and each one of those categories has portion size, percent, mass of protein content, and then again, uh, for whatever macromolecule it is, okay? All right, so anyways, we are going to keep track of exactly what we're feeding to our lion on the sheet. So let's get started. Uh, all right. The first thing that I would like you guys to do is to locate what types of ungulates there are, because it's going to tell you what our steak options are. So do beef have hooves? They definitely do. Beef cattle, of course. Uh, deer also have hooves. Uh, mice, no. Pigs, pigs actually do have hooves. Rats, or sorry, rabbits, rat, chicken, duck, quail, lizard, frog, toad, crickets, mealworms, superworms, waxworms, earthworms, None of those have uh, any kinds of hooves. So I've got three premium steak items and I think I'm gonna go ahead and choose, I'm gonna feed my lion some beef. We're gonna give him some beef, okay? And I'm just highlighting this. You guys don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm highlighting this so that it's easier for you guys to see um, what it is that I'm focusing in on um, and that you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? All right, so. Let me go ahead and add in all the information that I possibly can from this. And I'm gonna actually fold this. So that way I can stay zoomed in and you guys only need to see what you need to see. Okay, here we go. That's that's a little bit better. Okay, uh, anyways, I need to copy as much information as I possibly can right off the bat. So the first thing I'm gonna copy is my dietary item, which is beef, beef and my portion size right here says three kilograms. And this is going to be a happy uh, measurement size because they are both in kilograms. So nothing is going to have to be done here. Uh, protein percentage, protein content right here, 60%. Okay, massive protein content is not one of our options. So this is something that we are going to need to calculate. We'll come back to that at the end because like I said, I'd like to copy down all of the information I possibly can before moving on, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and do fats. So once again, my portion size, has my portion size changed? 
it definitely hasn't actually. So I can skip ahead and I can actually fill in that portion size because it's just not going to change at all. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, the thing we will need to fill in, however, is the percent of fats and percent of carbohydrates. And we definitely were given that down here. So that fat content is 8.9%, 8.9. Uh, and the carbohydrates percentage, oh, is a dash. So actually that's going to be zero. And that's going to be a really nice number that we will talk about here in a minute. Okay. All right. So once we have this information, now it's time for a little bit of sciencey math. Oh, I know. Okay. So remember that original, and I'm going to have to zoom out here. Sorry, guys. Do you guys remember that original, uh, original formula that I had given to you guys uh, saying, well, I don't know, maybe I should just reference my notebook so I can make sure I get the correct information. So I'm going to do that. Mass of blank content, okay, is going to be equivalent to equals, I have to move this over so I have some space, portion size, And we're going to multiply that by percent of the same uh, macromolecule that goes over here. Okay. All right. So that is the formula. I am going to need to do this. So beginning with our first one, I'm just going to fill in all of these uh, spots. Okay. Uh, beginning with our first one, we are talking about proteins here. Okay. So let's do the mass of protein content. So let me just fill out protein. And really, guys, you don't need to like do this every single time. I'm just doing it so that I can show you what it is that I'm doing. Protein. Okay. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is portion size. What's our portion size? It's right there. And our portion size is in a happy measurement, so we don't have to change it at all. So we're just going to put 3.0. Oops. Now it's getting kind of harder to see. Whoops. I'm definitely going to have to zoom out. OK, uh, so if we move over here to our percentage of protein, uh, what I'm going to have is 60%. OK, now try plugging that into a calculator. Mm, if you guys still have a dumb calculator, it definitely shouldn't work. OK, and the reason is because calculators don't like percentages. So what we're going to have to do is change that in to a decimal. And actually, I know it sounds scary, but it's actually really kind of fun maybe, okay? So the thing is, whenever you guys have a whole number as a percentage, you are always gonna have 0 0.0 at the end. And I mean, really just any whole number, you always have an imaginary zero after that decimal, okay? So uh, when I say percent, I am saying that this number is out of 100 okay and the way i like to think of this is how many zeros do i have in 100 i have one two and that tells me how many decimal spots that i need to move so let me erase that and let me move my decimal one two spots over okay and what happens to that number is that it actually is going to become 0 0.60 okay and like i said before we're just going to keep this we liked him we don't need to change him and we are going to multiply now those are some happy numbers that we can definitely plug into our calculator and you know what let me do that and i'm so sorry about the glare but i don't think there's anything i can really do about it so here is my phone my calculator whoops 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 Okay, here we go. Try not to like erase everything. All right. Anyways, now I can go ahead and put in my three, sorry, 3.0. And honestly, it's not really necessary for me to write 3.0, but I'll do it anyways. 3.0 times 0 0.60. And that's going to give me 1.8 kilograms. Okay. Because remember, we still had kilograms here. Maybe I shouldn't have dropped my label. Okay. Uh, but anyways, now we have 1.8 kilograms, and that is what I'm going to report on my paper here as the mass of protein content, because that's what I got, right? So my mass of protein content is going to be 1.8. All right, 
let's do fat content. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's see. Ooh, I don't really have an eraser, so I guess I'm using my finger. Oh, well. Okay. So we're gonna go through the same process. See, this is why I like using whiteboards instead of scratch paper, because I can just erase. Anyways, we're gonna do fats, fats, fats. Okay, so I'm just filling in that blank because it's the same formula. It just changes according to whatever molecule I'm solving for, okay? So portion size, like we said, remains unchanged. It's gonna stay at 3.0. We are gonna multiply that by our percent of fats, which is, oh, and this should be kilograms. Uh, don't forget, not don't drop your label. Uh, but anyways, sorry. Percent of fats is going to be 8.9 percent, right? And we said that we can't put percentages into calculators. So what we're going to have to do is, and there's always a zero in front of any whole number. So we're going to take this decimal and we're going to bump it one, two. Okay. And our new number should be 0 0.089. Okay. Now at this point, yes, I do want my, uh, my final answer to be, uh, at two decimals. However, we don't want to do that too early on because it's going to change our number quite a bit. Um, and I'm not going to show you that right now, but we will change it at the end to make sure that we have the right number of decimals for now. We're not going to. Okay. But anyways, uh, we have 3.0 and we're going to have to multiply that by this number. So let me grab my handed ended calculator one more time. Three times 0.089. And what I get as a result is 0 0.267, okay? Now, I still have three decimals here. Now is the time where I want to make sure that I only end up with one, two decimal spots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my last number and I'm gonna ask myself, does this make my number round up or does it make it round down? And seven, so basically anything that goes above five, so is equal to or greater than five, okay, is going to round up. And anything that is, whoops, is going to round up. Anything that is less than, whoops, I should go like this, less than or equal to, or sorry, less than five is going to end up going down. So seven is higher than five. So that means we are going to go ahead and round that number up. So that six is going to end up turning into a seven, just another reason I like to use the dry erase board. And that is our final answer here. That is what we're going to report 27 kilograms, or sorry, 0 0.27 kilograms. So 0 0.27. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Uh, now carbohydrates. Well, guess what? This one's actually pretty easy because it's a zero. And when you multiply by a zero, what do you automatically get? You get a zero. Okay. All right. So, uh, I'm going to do a second dietary item with you guys. Um, and this time what I'm going to do is I think I'll pick so remember, we want to make sure we've already taken care of our premium item. We needed to make sure that we're giving our lion, uh, some veggies with his steak, right? We well, that that was a bad example because lions are carnivores and they don't eat veggies. Oh, this is awkward. What would a lion have on the side? Maybe a biscuit? I don't know. I don't know. If you guys find out, please don't find out. Okay. Like I said, awkward. Sorry. Okay. Um. Anyways, let's go ahead and I don't know. Let's feed him a chicken. We'll feed him a chicken. Okay. Uh, now, same process. I copy all this information over here. Chicken. Okay. Uh, he weighs 2.5 kilograms. And like I said, I can just jump ahead and fill that stuff in because his portion size does not change. 2.5 and 2.5. Uh, now my protein content percent is 64.9. Uh, my fats percent is 22.4 and my carbohydrate percent is zero. And because that's an easy, easy, easy uh, number to solve for, I'm just going to put zero because why do the extra work, right? Okay, now we can solve for our chicken. So let's go ahead and fill that information in here quickly. Okay, so I'm just erasing all this information. Now I can plug in my information. 
So we are going to get rid of fats. I'm actually going to stop writing it up here because I think you guys hopefully get the idea. And if you don't, rewind and then go back and try it again. Anyways, uh, so we'll start with the mass of proteins. So our portion size is 2.5 kilograms. Our percent of protein is 64.9%. And we are going to multiply that. Uh, now, the percents, the calculators don't like the percentages, so we need to move our decimal place over one, two spots, and that turns our number into 0 0.649. And once again, we can multiply that by the same portion size because that has remained unchanged. So 2.5, we're going to take 2.5, five times 0 0.649 that is going to give us 1.6225 whoa i thought we said we only wanted two decimals well gonna have to be a bit of a process so five is equal to five and that means that we're going to round this next number up so this two is going to turn into a three but we still have one too many decimals so we're going to have to do it again now three is below five, which means that it's gonna round down. So that three I'm gonna get rid of and that two is actually not gonna round down. What's gonna happen is it's gonna stay the same because technically that's rounding down. Um, so our correct answer is 1.62 kilograms. Okay, and that is a mass of protein content for our chicken uh, under our lion diet is 1.62, okay? All right, now let's basically do the same thing for our fat content. So I'm erasing all this good information, doing the same stuff all over again. Pretty simple, 2.5. I think a lot of you guys overthought this assignment, not gonna lie. But anyways, uh, 2.5, we're gonna multiply that by 22.4%. And once again, calculators don't like percentages. So let's take that uh decimal and let's move it over one two because that's how many zeros are in a hundred and our new number is going to be zero point zero oh sorry zero point two two four all right we're going to take that number we're going to multiply it by our 2.5 because nothing had to change here and we like those kilograms and that is what we're going to plug into our phone or sorry calculator i shouldn't say phone calculator 2.5 times 0 0.224 that gives me 0 0.56, 0 0.56 kilograms. And I'm happy with that number because that is two decimal spots. So 0 0.56 is what I'm going to add to my fat content, 0 0.56. Okay, awesome. So now we've got our two items. Well, the third item that I'm going to pick is going to be on this list is actually going to be something that is in grams. Let me see, what would I pick? You know what? I'm going to pick this rat over here because I don't know. Everything else seems kind of small. Okay, so we're going to feed our lion a rat. And that's going to be my third item on here. Okay, now I'm copying in all the information that I can. However, whoa, halt. Ma'am, this is in grams. Oh, okay. So. Going back to our vocab, and hopefully you guys copied it down correctly. Going to our vocab. Let's see. Oops, I lost my page. Hold on. Please hold. Okay. Going back to our vocab, I gave you guys a conversion. So let me copy that down. Kilograms is equal to uh, whatever grams over 1 thousand. Okay. Fabulous. Let me get rid of that. That was the information that I needed. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 100 grams. Okay. Now, uh, oops, 100 grams. I'm going to put that over a thousand and whatever that is, I'm going to get in kilograms. Uh, an easy way to do this is to simply one, two, one, two zeros. Okay. And that ends up turning into one over 10 grams. Okay. Now, what we do here is we have one zero left over here. And what we are going to want to do is take the decimal that is secretly existing over here, and we're going to move it in front, which actually means that our answer is going to be 0 0.1. Okay. So 0 0.1 kilograms is our answer for the portion size of our rats. 
So whenever you guys have an animal that is, or a, a diet item that is in grams, you need to make sure that you're converting it over to kilograms because that is what this one is in, okay? So uh, our rat is not one or 100 grams. It's going to be 0 0.1 kilograms, okay? Now, the protein, fat, percentage, none of that has changed. So that is still the same, the exact same. I need to copy it over. Uh, so wait, 57.9. Um, skipping ahead just to fill in my information that I already have. So I'm just filling in the portion size. Now I'm going to fill in the fat percent. So that's 23.7. And my carbohydrates. Oh, look, another zero. And when I multiply by a zero, I get a zero. So easy, easy. Okay. Now I'm going to help you guys solve for this one, but I'm going to let you guys go crazy on that one by yourself because I want to show you how to total these up at the end and double check to make sure that you have met requirements. But we'll get back to that in a second. Let's do our math. Uh, now we don't need this because we already solved for the grams of that rat, but we are going to need to plug in our information in order to solve for our protein percent, or sorry, mass of protein content, at least for the rat. Okay, so our portion size we said is 0 0.1. Our percentage is 57.9%. Okay, and that's kilograms. Okay, uh, now calculators don't like this. Move that decimal over one, two. Our new number becomes 0 0.579. And once again, multiplying by that exact same kilogram amount. And what we end up with when we type it into our handy dandy calculator, uh, 0 0.1 times 0 0.579 is 0 0.0579. We got four decimal spots with this number. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we need to take it step by step. Nine is a number that is greater than five. So when I get rid of that nine, I can take this seven and I can turn it into an eight. Now I'm going to do it all over again. Eight is also greater than five, which means that I'm going to take this eight, erase it, and I'm going to round this five up to six. Now I am happy with my number of decimals that I have. And my answer for the mass of protein content is going to be 0 0.06 kilograms. Six. Okay. All right, so like I said, I was going to let you guys figure that out by yourselves just to kind of save you some time here um, because I know you guys look at that timer and I know y'all are like, ah, oh, miss, it's 30 minutes long, eh, whatever. Anyways, should have paid attention the first time around, you little booger butts. Yeah, I called you booger butt. I know, I know. Anyways, uh, so let me show you guys how to get the total daily mass. Uh, now, first of all, I want to make sure that you guys know this is still in kilograms. Uh, this is also still in kilograms. And that's exactly the same thing that you're going to do here. So the process to get these is the same thing over here. Okay. All right. Um, now, here's what we're going to do. All we have to do is we're figuring out the total daily mass. So we just need to add it up. So five plus one is nine. Five plus one plus zero is nine. I'm going to keep my decimal in the same spot. And a three plus a two plus a zero is five. Okay. That is my total answer. My total daily mass is 5.9 kilograms. Okay. Now I can go over here to my mass of protein content and I can add that stuff up. Now pretend there's a zero here. So zero plus two plus six is going to be eight. Eight plus six is going to be 14, but I need to carry my one. Okay, so one plus one plus one plus zero is three. So my correct answer for mass of protein content would be 3.48 kilograms. Now, uh, portion size, remember, stays the same. So I can actually jump ahead 5.9 kilograms, 5.9 kilograms. Okay, but all you guys are going to do is you're just going to add them up add them up okay and that's just going to be the total number there so this one's really easy because it's a zero zero plus zero plus zero plus zero do you guys fill these last two out honestly they're pretty easy um when you guys uh i'm gonna let you go free what you guys are going to be doing is solving for the zebra and then solving for the hedgehog uh when you guys are doing this make sure that you start by reading the description okay 
I also forgot to tell you. Uh, so once you get these numbers, you can compare them to the numbers that you have here. So daily requirements, you require a 5.5 kilograms at minimum. And we have made this lion happy. He is alive. He gets to see another whole day. Okay. Now, fat content, uh, when you guys get this, it's not going to be in percent, right? It's going to be in kilograms. So as long as your fat content is greater than or equal to that 1.32, you are going to have made that lion happy. Now, if it is less than that, okay, what you guys are going to need to do is throw in something else for that lion to eat, okay? That just means that you have to add an additional item and rework the totals. That's it, okay? So it's not that big of a deal. It's not that scary. Um, and like I said, as long as you guys are reading over here and getting rid of that extra information, cause look at how much extra information that was, right? Look at what we only had to highlight. Um, so make sure you're reading through here to know what that diet consists of. Um, make sure you're going through this list and make sure you're copying down all your information and then doing your calculations kind of like at the end. Okay. But basically all of your guys' answers are going to vary between the zebra and the hedgehog. Uh, just make them a good diet, whatever you guys would be a good diet. Okay. All right. Uh, when you are done, do not glue this in. You guys are going to turn this in for a grade. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I have for you. Okay. So have a wonderful day. Take care. Be safe. Bye. I know it's annoying.